Now, is the is the good is the best part about the dust is it prevents hurricanes? Am I am I making that it up? It, it, it just. <sighs> Yes, it kind of chokes off the hurricane season, but okay. in early June, when a lot of this dust typically comes off, this is an annual thing. This is not something new that we just discovered a year ago. Right. This happens all the time, and typically in June, the hurricane season is relatively quiet anyway. They kind of coincide together, but strong winds blow across Mali, Mauritania, and they take that Saharan dust over to Senegal, Gambia, Cabo Verde, and then right across the Caribbean. You kind of see that video there and if it coincides moving overhead when we have a nice sunrise or sunset you can see it the vibrant colors as some of that very fine particle dust can come over the state of Florida 60 million tons of this mineral dust kind of lofts into the atmosphere annually this is according to NASA and it creates that massive layer of hot, dusty air, and then it comes across the Atlantic. And it really kind of puts, you know, it squelches the hurricane season at that particular moment. But there are some other things that this dust does. And Russell, I told you one this morning, and yeah. you didn't even know about it. So let's talk about this. Well, let's talk about the good part of this, right? The good part of this is it really helps to take some of the organic material and kind of move it across, and it kind of settles in into the water and stuff like that. Unfortunately, um, it does near the ground cause some bad air quality if it can get thick enough. But here's something that they're studying right now. And this, by the way, is a live look at that Saharan air layer. Look, Take a look, Russell. Some of that heavier That's amazing. dust around Miami going down into the Cuba. It's, it's hard to see. It's fine particle. But this is a channel that they have on their satellite where you can actually see that. Look at that. But what happens also is they're finding a correlation. Listen to this. Between the Saharan dust and red tides. Huh. Okay, now bear with me here, because with this dust and inside this dust, it's made up of one of the particles is iron. Okay, a lot of iron. And that iron will fall down into the water, into the Gulf, into the Caribbean, and areas like that. And what it does is it's kind of eaten up by this bacteria, which can then transform it into excess nitrogen. All of a sudden, you get these nitrogen blooms, these algal blooms, you know, AKA red tide can start to develop. So they're finding a correlation to this dust to this dust and red tide. So that is something that is absolutely going to have to be monitored.